Today on Winthrop Close Up, men's basketball coach Pat Kelsey was a minute man for a minute. And a new era begins in women's basketball. Although March is winding down, we take a look at an Irish tradition. Welcome to Winthrop Close Up. My name is Nolan Mackey. And I'm Hagen Glenn. The NCAA March Madness Tournament has come to an end for the men's basketball team. However, there's been some confusion on Coach Pat Kelsey's recent change of heart. UMass has hired a new men's basketball coach. This afternoon, Athletic Director Ryan Bamford announced the university's hired Pat Kelsey as the new head men's basketball coach. <laughs> Just five days after the Eagles lost out to Butler in the NCAA tournament, the Winthrop community took another loss with the announcement of Pat Kelsey as the new head basketball coach of the University of Massachusetts. And if that wasn't enough, shortly before his new conference, where he was to be introduced as the new head coach, Kelsey had a change of heart. Uh, at 3.30 this afternoon, Pat, Ke this is my statement, at 3.30 this afternoon, Pat Kelsey asked to be released from his employment agreement at UMass which was executed on Tuesday. After speaking with Pat about his decision, I honored his request, and we are now working through how this impacts our executed memorandum of understanding. For personal reasons, I have asked the University of Massachusetts to allow me to be released from the offer I accepted to be the next head men's basketball coach. To be clear, this decision is entirely personal and in no way an assessment of the commitment UMass made to me personally. At this time, Coach Kelsey has decided not to hold a news conference and instead will let the statement from the University of Massachusetts stand on his return to Winthrop as the men's basketball coach. This unusual turn of events sparked a lot of talk on Twitter from former UMass players and fans such as Marcus Camby, Zach Coleman, Malik Hines. Pat Kelsey's picture was even turned into a Michael Jordan meme. The NCAA tournament is down to the final four, and even though Winthrop's time in the tournament was cut short, it can't take away from the great season that they had. Looking back on the experience, the players share some of these thoughts. My experiences in the tournament, uh, Big South tournament, was something you know, that I'll never forget. I'm not going to shadow down on it at all. Like I had a Really good senior season, I think. I'm going to miss it, playing with these boys. It was real fun. And, um, you know, the next thing entails, what entails next is going to be great. It was unreal. Like, getting on that plane, just like by a chartered plane, all the cameras and the nice hotels, and I'm um, like, playing in the Milwaukee Bucks basketball stadium. Like, it was so many good memories that I'll remember forever. And it was sad losing the game, but um, all good things could have come to an end. Butler was a good team, so credit to them boys. But, um, Overall, it was, it was great. This was the last game for popular senior Keon Johnson. He left the court for the last time as one of the most popular players in the history of the program. Butler would go on to lose the University of North Carolina. The Final Four continues this weekend, followed by the championship game Monday, April 3rd. It is an esteemed honor, it is a privilege to introduce Winthrop University's newest women's basketball coach, Lynette Woodard. With those words, a new era has begun for women's basketball. Coach Lynette Woodward joined the program in August of 2016 as an assistant. She was appointed the acting head coach in January following the suspension of Coach Kevin Cook. At her news conference, she talked about the future. And here we are today. Uh, we're moving forward. Uh, I'm so proud to be able to lead our team who is right here before you. Uh, they've been through a lot, uh, but I know that they're winners in their heart and we're going to work together to get this thing turned around. Um, Woodward was a full-time All-American at Kansas and a two-time U.S. Olympian. Not only was she the first woman to play for the Harlem Globetrotters, she was also a member of the Nazmuth Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame, the Kansas Hall of Fame, and the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame. We wish Coach Woodward and the Lady Eagles good luck in the upcoming basketball season. Some college students want to eat healthy but simply cannot afford to. 
Yoga is often viewed as a religious practice. However, it's all about connecting the mind, body, and spirit. Next on Close Up. Welcome back to Winthrop Close Up. Eating healthy while staying within your budget is hard for everyone. Close Up's Pagan Glenn attended a lecture that tells us how this can be accomplished. The focus of this lecture provided tips as well as nutritional advice on what is good or bad for students and how to go about buying the best foods for their money. The residents that came out to this program would uh, hopefully leave knowing a little bit more about where they should be looking to find better, healthier options on campus and off campus while they're shopping and just be able to improve their diets overall and hopefully their just lifestyle. They inform students on how to substitute unhealthy options with low-cost healthy options as well as small ways to better their daily diets. Substitute non-fat green yogurt for sour cream. Does it taste as good? No. I hope that they can get out of the program that it isn't as hard as it seems to live a healthier lifestyle. Um, that they can still make healthier choices living on a college campus. For further information, talk to one of the many nutritionists on Winthrop's campus. And remember, it is possible to eat healthy on a college budget. <coughs> According to nutritionists, the trick to eating healthy for less is to meal prep. Being healthy is important, but staying healthy can be a challenge. Are you up for it? Winthrop Dining Services held a health and wellness event for the National Nutrition Month to bring awareness to being and staying healthy. We're here today for National Nutrition Month just promoting health and wellness and having students write their nutrition goals. Um, and we also have fruits to sample as well as salad shakers and some other fun giveaways. As students stopped by the table, they were able to pick up general nutrition and pamphlets on weight loss to become more educated on how to stay healthy. Challenge yourself to stay healthy and continue to educate yourself on nutrition for your body's needs. Newly elected President Donald Trump has announced his plan to defund Planned Parenthood. We look to see how this would affect the surrounding community. Pregnancy center, the pregnancy centers here in Rock Hill dedicate their time and efforts to help both men and women in the community with unplanned pregnancies and weigh their options through various supporting organizations. There's been many accounts where um, a woman has told us that she is so glad that she came here, that we answered her needs, that she felt at such peace. These girls can come in one person and leave as, a, as another. Since 1984, it has been their mission to help members of the community the best way they can. The Rock Hill Pregnancy Center will continue to help families despite the defunding of the program. Um. To learn more about the Pregnancy Center, visit their website or call to find out how they can help. When some people hear the word yoga, they think of it as a religious exercise rather than a physical exercise. Reporter Ashley Briggs recently attended a class, A Misconception to Practicing Yoga. That's true. However, the Huffington Post says that over 20 million Americans practice yoga while also spending $10 billion a year on yoga-related products and classes. And just lay yourself back to the wall. Try to get your hips back. Jill Thyman teaches back yoga back. at Winthrop University. Really at first, she had no interest in yoga, but ended up falling in love with it. She says you can honor a higher power or in mountain yoga, climber but it is prep. not connected to So think to about where we're going. Not yet, not yet. Inhale, three point. A practice um, of moving with your breath. So combining breath and movement. Um, your breath has a lot of control over how you perform um, academically, physically. So just learning to harness that energy that you have inside of you. Yoga classes are also heavily populated with women compared to men, according to the Washington Post. One guy started to practice yoga because his roommate is an instructor. I sit a lot. Um, either like at a desk or like in, on my couch at my house and uh, if you're not moving a lot um, your joints will set a certain way and uh, yoga kind of really helps you stay loose. Yoga is said to increase circulation, digestion, strength and flexibility. 
One dancer says she's noticed how yoga has helped her. You'll feel better after the class and it'll teach you how to calm down in stressful situations, especially as a dancer. You know, if you get nervous before performances, learning how to breathe and stuff is really beneficial. So even if you hate it like I did when I started, you should still practice because it's beneficial. There are many different types of yoga. To find out the right one for you, try several different classes before deciding which one meets your needs. Pagan? Thank you, Ashley. Our in-studio guest will talk about the topic of her new film and when it will be released. Welcome back. I'm Kendall Gray. And today on Close Up, we're talking to Liana Gladden, the beginning filmmaker. She just made a film about natural hair. So, is it difficult being a first-time filmmaker? Um, yes and no, like, it just depends. This particular film hasn't been too hard, like, there hasn't been a script or anything, but it had its difficult moments, you know, teaching the choreography. Some people had never done choreography before, so it was new to them, and getting that in their bodies was new, but overall, you know, it's been a great experience. And what inspired you to become a filmmaker? Um, well, I'd have to say Ava DuVernay, uh, she's a director, but, like, seeing her stuff and just knowing that it was possible for me to do things like that. It became very inspirational to me, like during theater throughout middle school and high school and everything. I just got more into it and filmmaking became something I was interested in. Now, tell me a little bit about your film. Well, it's about, it's centered around black women and mainly like breaking down stereotypes, but also highlighting the conflicts black women go through. Like it's a stage, there are stages of different things. The first stage, the first video is a close up of one of my actresses. And it's basically highlighting uh, beauty standards for black women, how we struggle with that, you know, struggle with being pretty and fitting into, you know, Eurocentric beauty standards, how that's hard. Right. And then the next one is um, struggles with unity within the black female community. Very often black women tend to tear each other down instead of building each other up. And I'm a big, I'm big on like champion women to, you know, help each other. And so that's the second film. And then the last film is basically like the, evolution of black women, you know, it's coming together, us, you know, embracing ourselves and uplifting ourselves and empowering ourselves. So the film is much more than just natural hair. Yes. Right, right. Well, I commend you on this film, Shining Light on Beautiful Black Women. Thank it's you. very important. It needs to be shown. Definitely. And it was great talking to you today. Thank you. Thank you. And Thank you. her film will be out April 1st here at Dina's Place will be the Winter uh, Dance Film Collective we'll be airing our screening right here. I'm Kendall Gray, Liana Gladden, and this is Winter Close-Up. In softball, the Lady Eagles earned a doubleheader sweep of Western Carolina. Winthrop scored 12 runs on 23 hits to win the first game 4-3 and the second game 8-4. Co-head coach Mark Cook said he thought the team did a good job of putting the ball in play, laying good, laying good bunts and using their speed to produce runs and take advantage of errors. The Eagles will be back home this weekend to face the Lancers of Longwood. And on the other diamond, the Winter baseball team set a double header over High Point 12 to 5 and 4 to nothing. With these two victories, the Eagles extend their winning streak to 5 in a row. They improve their season record to 12 and 11 overall and 5 and 1 in the Big South Conference. You can catch the Eagles in action as they will be at home the week of April 5th through the 11th. Although St. Patrick's Day has come and gone, Close Up's reporter, Emily Days, stopped in downtown Rock Hill to see how people celebrated. Over 2,000 people gathered for the St. Patrick's Day festivities. The celebration features something for people of all ages. There were arts and crafts for the older crowd and face painting for the kids. People also got to enjoy some beer, delicious food, and Irish dancing performed by local dancers. The purpose of the event is to celebrate the Irish culture both in music and uh, song and um, just generally having a good time. Celebration is just a band like the one behind me and arts and crafts. The party atmosphere was a great opportunity for people to hang out with friends and share a laugh or two. I really liked seeing the Irish dancers and the Irish bands perform and seeing all of the people from all over the community just come here to one place to celebrate. Reporting from Old Town Rock Hill, Emily Days, Winter Close Up. You know what I love about Mardi Gras? I love the jazz music. Oh yeah, I've been to New Orleans a couple times. You have? Yeah. I've always wanted to go. Looks like fun. Okay. Well this has been Winter Close Up. We'll see you next time. <laughs>